Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where I talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of The Boys. A fantastic episode. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. This might be... I'm feeling it already. I know it's too, it's too early to call this shot. Or maybe not, but I think... This might be the best episode yet so far. Holy crap, this episode was good. There was just so much packed into this episode. I'm gonna have to break it all down. First and foremost, let's start off with the opening. At first, I was like, what is the deep doing? I'm like, oh, he's like, yeah, we gotta come together. And then they did the whole Pepsi thing in episode four. Now they're doing the Imagine V. I'm like, well, I mean, once again, this show calls all the, sh I mean, they're calling everyone out. They, they, pull this, they pull a South Park where it's like, oh, we're gonna make fun of everyone and everything. I have never actually seen the Imagine video. I've heard people talk about it, how tone deaf it is, yada yada, so on and so forth. Um, I just have no interest in watching it, and just I, I've heard and just I've avoided too many. I've heard what people said about it, and that's about it. I just that's all it is to it. I'm not gonna like oh join in on jokes, but it's just like of course they were gonna take a commentary on it because like one of the main people in it, because I, I like I said I haven't even seen all of it, so I don't know all the celebrities that are in it. The main one I know is Gal Gadot, which I think there's an extra layer of like right, she's Wonder Woman, and so who's the first one in this? It's the Deep. So I think I don't know if she started it, and then everyone else joined in, but even she's kind of been like yeah. Yeah, that wasn't the best thing to do at the time like even she recognizes that so i'm not going to give them like give her or anyone else too much guff on it if, especially they go like yeah probably wasn't the right thing to do and you can just be like yeah you learn from your mistakes that's all i'm gonna chalk that up to but uh then they get a train involved and then we get like a long list of people too it's like it's josh gad i want to say it's um mila kunis and ashton kusher um god there was someone else there were so many uh, Kumail Nanjiani, which also he's a hero too, uh, uh, in Eternals, um, they just got a whole bunch of like, oh, Elizabeth Banks, just like, the, the list just kept going on and on, I'm like, wow, and I love, who's the final person? Noir with the title card, like the, the words written out, I love it so, so much. So, in the aftermath of everything that went down with Soldier Boy, I love it. We've ne like, I, I was wondering, I was like, is that fear in his eyes last episode? Your boy, Homelander, is tripping, like, scared. He's just looking around the moment he sees, he's like, no, that, that's Soldier Boy. He's like, yeah, no, because I love, uh, I love, um, Ashley being like, is that someone, it could be someone cosplaying. He's like, no, just shut your mouth, just shut up. And he's just like, all right, we're going to handle this. And I was like, the, the thing I asked about last episode, I'm like, What's Black Noir going to say when him and um, Soldier Boy go face to face? And now he sees Soldier Boy's back. And so I love that it's like, right, you know he was part of your squad, right? And like, do you know like what happened? And Black Noir says nothing. And it's like, okay. And I love Homelander being like, don't worry, we're in this together. That's why I'm wondering like, is that, you know, if you've seen Diabolical episode eight, the season finale, I would assume that's canonical to this because the fact is he's counting on Black Noir more because he was like, except because even from the beginning when everyone's numbers were down, like in the first season, he's like, except for you, Black Noir, you're still doing a great job. Black Noir does seem like the only person he can trust around him. And then what did happen? The moment Black Noir stayed behind, I was like, he's going to run, isn't he? Gets in the elevator. I was like, why are you cutting yourself open? Ah, the tracker. Interesting. Because you, you kind of forget that they have trackers in them. Because the last time we saw that was when Annie cut hers out. So we haven't seen it since then. So that's why I was kind of, I actually kind of slipped my mind. And then he's just, I'm like, oh, he's running. It's like, yeah, you are next to the TNTs. You are potentially the only member of the team of Payback left. So that was fascinating. Um, so he ran, and the moment the Deep and Cassandra tell him, it's like, yeah, the Deep, uh, he's like, no, Black War, no, he wouldn't do that. He, he wouldn't do that to me. I'm like, wow, you are scared and heartbroken. He's like, no, Black Noir wouldn't do that to me. He, no, there's no way. It's like, well, if he's going after the rest of Payback, that would include Black Noir as well. And it's just like, all right, Deep, go to Vermont and find a TNT, and like, if uh, if uh, Soldier Boy, Soldier Up, uh, tell me, you're just like, oh. Uh. And then... We had that moment where he's in his room and he starts talking to himself. I'm like, oh, God, we already knew he was crazy. He's officially lost his goddamn mind. And then I'm like, he's like, you know, anytime we were back in that room when they were being experimented on, who handled stuff? I was like, wait, you're pulling a Moon Knight here? And, you know, I'm, obviously this was done before Moon Knight was even done, too. I mean, it'd be interesting if production-wise they were both happening at the same time. Either way, 
It's like he has a, a dissociative situation going on here. Of course, trauma creates that in people, uh, which is interesting. This episode kind of tackles trauma in many different ways. And different characters' responses to said trauma in many different ways. But in his particular case, he kind of dissociate, dissociated and uh, created a stronger version of himself. The one that handles everything. The non Because it's like, right, this Homelander we see in front of us is scared. This is, this is the human. And he's like, that human that looked for love in other people. First it was Madeline. Then it was Maeve. Then it was Stormfront. And then um, it was Ryan, and none of them loved you back. That pathetic, like, human side of you. Do this, that also, like, him back and forth like that. I forgot. I, I want to say I was watching maybe Absolute uh, Comics, uh, um, Marvel, Absolute Marvel DC, or is it Absolute Comics Marvel DC? Um, and I think they'd thought of, that someone had thrown it out there. It's like, oh man, Anthony Starr would be a great Eobarthon. I was like, oh. Fuck yes. Just go ahead, take him at take him as Homelander and just slap him in a reverse flash suit. He'd be a great reverse flash. Holy shit. Which interesting timing too because well, spoilers. Well, just for me to bring that up because, you know, the reverse flash is still pretty active in the flash TV show. So that's why I'm saying. But regardless. Um that, but it makes you wonder, anytime we've seen Homelander, which Homelander has it been? The one that's always been strong and confident has got to be the other one. Like, the one is, this one has always been the one that's always been hurt and taken by surprise. So I think, or is that the one that's always trying to pretend to be tough? Like the one a couple episodes ago that grabbed um, a train and grabbed onto him and was kind of like, ah, stopped himself. I wonder, was that this Homelander, the more human him, but stopping himself? Because at the end of the day, he wants people to love him. And it's like, right, as long as we're in this together, the other Homelander is telling him, we got this. So, you know, because there's a part of him that's scared, like, but what if I'm not strong enough to go up? It's like, once again, he's terrified. He's never been terrified because he's always been at the top of the food chain. Everyone else, it's ignorant, insignificant. Yeah, you could do a little here and there, but no one's been able to stop him so far. And, you know, well, we see how the episode plays out. It's like, yo, we're in a completely different, uh, we're at a different point now in the story, so. But that's all going down. Um... I love, really quickly, too, the Deepest kind of had it with his wife, Cassandra, because she's like, oh, that was so good. He's like, yeah, but you didn't have to step in. She's like, hey, we're a team. I just want to help you. He's like, yeah, I get it. Thanks, baby. And then he's walking away. He's almost like, because it's like, right, Cassandra just keeps, like, he's Homelander's punk, and now his wife is punking him, too. So it's like he has no choice but to kind of go with what they say. He's, you know, they both got him whipped. And it's like, right, he can't even do anything on his own. Plus, we know where his of... His, uh, you know, he had to eat, um, was it Timothy? And it was his wife that told him to do it. It's like, yeah, a lot of stuff is kind of his choice. I'm a, um, I'm assuming she's also the one that pushed for him to, uh, fire everyone at the crime analyst unit. Uh, because I love he tried to put it on, um, all on Ashley. Ashley's like, no, that was you. That was your decision. So I was like, oh, that was it. We're just about to get to Ashley in a second. But it's like, yeah, I, I think that was probably his wife's decision to like, yeah, curry favor with Homelander. But it's like, yeah, with everything going on, probably not the smartest thing to do, especially because he doesn't know what he was doing when he was trying. Because it's like, there's at least two other people that weren't there, but maybe he f finally fired them as well, or they just weren't here that day. Well, they're trying to keep the ranks closed anyway, because they don't want the world to know, like, oh, Soldier Boy, because that's also the biggest thing. That's what Homelander, well, not only is he scared about the whole Soldier Boy thing of, like, oh, he's out there killing people, and I don't know if I could stop him, but it's also, like, right, right, the biggest hero of all time, he's still toted as such a goat amongst the heroes that his statue's still out front, and if, if it gets found out that Fox's greatest hero uh, is a villain and killing people, then Vought's going down. He's like, and I'm going down. He's like, and I love that line from him. It's not fair. It's just unfair. It's like, I'm sure a lot of people who've interacted with you, you piece of shit, would feel the same way. Oh, I love it, you hypocrite. Then, uh, speaking of Ashley, whoo, I love it when, like, uh, A-Train comes to her about Blue Hall. He's like, I want justice. He's going at her, and she's kind of twisting her hair, and I love, she's like, wait, justice? And then she pulls out her hair, she's like, oh! Fuck, I'm like, did you, did you kind of get off just then? I mean, it's kind of your thing now. But she calls him out. I'm like, oh, I've spent 100 plus hours in basically cleaning up your messes, your three murders, um, while you were all at the club with the boys or getting your toasts up by pop club. Who, let's not forget, you also murdered. Oh, yeah, you didn't think I knew about that, did you? And it's like, yeah, I was like, yo, go, go. I was like, Ashley's going in on him. 
I love it. That is like, right, you didn't care about collateral damage until it was your own personal situation. She's like, so go fuck yourself. And he didn't have nothing to say. And she's like, yeah, I said it out loud. She felt good about it. I was like, yeah, go Ashley. You're still the mass. You're also a massive fucking hypocrite because I don't see you trying to put Homelander in this place. It's because you know a train situation that he ain't who he was, that he's not the homicidal maniac. Yes, he's 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 an asshole himself, but you know that he's not the homicidal maniac that Homelander is. There's a big gap between most homicidal maniacs and Homelander. So, yeah, she's still a hypocrite because it's like, yeah, the same stuff, you could call Homelander out, but you would never question her, him, but you could do it to A-Train because A-Train's a punk. You know, you can do that to him. But it's about time someone put A-Train in his place. Once again, you never fully apologize, even about the Robin thing. You wanted to put the whole pop call thing on Huey, but even at the end of season one, he's like, yeah, I did it. That was on me, but he still wanted to blame Huey. He needed to blame Huey because he didn't want to take personal responsibility, but it's like, yeah, you gave a half-ass apology. You try to throw it all on Robin that she was like, oh, she was out in the middle of the street. Once again, took a fucking step off the curb. Two, uh, you were at the club with your boys laughing about the fact that you ran into her and sped through her. And three, when you're in front of him, uh, Huey, you didn't give a sincere apology. You gave such a half-ass apology. You didn't even recognize Huey when you bumped into him later. So, yeah, it's all coming back around to him. And it's like, yo, for the first time, like he had, I think for the first time in a long time, if ever, uh, his eyes are open. Because it's like, yeah. Your brother, I, I think I brought it up before. It's like, yeah, like all the shit that you've dished out, it's now coming back to you and now it's an issue. It's like, right, if you hadn't set up this whole Blue Hulk thing trying to handle it the very corporate way that Vault wanted to handle it, maybe that situation wouldn't have played out that way. Am I saying that's your fault? You, it's just, basically karma came back to bitch slap you. Like, I'm just, you know, so. It's not on him that Blue Hulk did what he did. Blue Hulk's an asshole for doing what he did, but it's like, yeah, karma comes back around, you know? Yeah, it could be quite the fickle uh, thing, thing, you know, so, I mean, karma in particular, so. Uh, at the same time, we spend a little time with Annie and uh, M.M., which I do like that they're probably going to be, like, the, the squad going forward, because I think that's a good pairing, because M.M. and Annie hit it off last season, too, when they were uh, going to go find out more about Liberty, they kind of hit it off, too. Uh, I thought that was kind of a, a nice situation as well. And now we kind of get a, almost a continuation of that because it, for M.M., he's pissed. He's like, yeah, you white people get to, like, fly off the handle and I got to be the one to turn the other cheek. Because, like, I love that because um, Edgar made a similar comment last episode. It's like, oh, yeah, uh, getting angry is a white man's is, is a white person's privilege. It's like, yeah. But then for M.M., it's like, yeah, that's some bullshit. You know, it's like, so fuck Butcher, fuck Huey, you know? It's like he wants to go out, even though he knows a gun won't work, he's still going to go after Soldier Boy. But it's like, right, let's find a plan first. Let's work this out. Starlight has to go on TV. And it's like, lo and behold, I love that. It's like, oh, who's this third? Who's this uh, empty seat for? None other than um, Newman. And you're like, wow, Starlight's in the most awkward position in between Homelander, which there's a fucked up sense. Like, it's fucked up because there was some sincerity to him being like, I'm glad to have you by my side. It's like, for one, it's like, you you think this is a real relationship? He's so deluded that it's almost like, oh, thank you for being here for me. She's like, if she wasn't here, you'd kill her. You, it's self-preservation, you fucker. But he's so in his own head, he's scared right now that he's trying to like convince himself like, oh, Starlight's here for me, babe, and everything. And it's like, yeah, so what are you going to do? Oh, this super villain thing, it's not that big of a deal. Well, 19 people are dead. It's like, whoa, 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 didn't you just hear me? Yeah, like, I see what you're doing. The media, they shouldn't listen to you. They should listen to me because the people know the truth. And then I just love Ashley is like, what was it? Uh, the next reporter you're going to do is out of my fucking ass, you piece of shit. And I was like, yo. Because once again, you can call out A-Train, but you sure as hell won't stand up against Homelander. So don't, you know, once again, showing that Ashley's a massive hypocrite, just like A-Train is. Um... And then Newman's like, hey, Andy, let's talk for about 10 minutes. It's like, yeah, oh, where's Huey? Oh, he acts like I was going to, I felt like he's avoiding me. Like he thinks I'm going to pop his head. And you're like, so she knows. And so it's like, all right, let's cut the act, Andy. You, know, you know and I know. Don't try anything. It won't end well for you. You won't win. So Newman's like, okay, let's take down Homelander together. Uh, the fact is, with your massive following, it's going to benefit me in the long run. It's like, right, we need to take Homelander. So, yeah, it's like, right, you got what you wanted from Homelander, but you see him as the 
it's she learned from Edgar to play all sides and she knows like right I got what I needed from Homelander my daughter's got the V she's going to be protected but I need to have insurances in place to take him out so I was like yeah let's collaborate and Annie's like you know what I she's like I'm tired of this basically you this entire vault everything is bullshit fuck you fuck Homelander fuck vault like I'm done I'm tired of people telling me that I have to do shitty stuff to win. You know, the whole whatever it takes. She's like, she's heard that from Huey. She's hearing this now like Newman. It's like, you, you fucking like popped all those heads in Congress. She's like, to be fair, like, and don't weep over half of them were like sending, uh, sending around a deep fake of me blowing Bin Laden. You're like, fuck. You know, so there was some, there was some personal spice mixed into killing those people. Plus your dad probably told you, like, oh, do me this favor and do that, so... But, um, so Annie's like, right, either get out of my room or go ahead and pop my head. And then Newman comes over to her. He's like, well, don't tell anybody about this, okay? You know, because it's like, right, I can kind of get you at any point in time. And as she's leaving, Annie's nose started bleeding. It's it's not an immediate thing. It seems like it can be, but it does seem like there is a little bit of a wind up. But I guess if given enough time and you're not prepared for it, your head goes pop and you won't see it coming. But... It's going, I, I don't know, that's going to be interesting. Like, Newman's, like, once again, she's kind of dropped that front of, I mean, everything she was doing was for Edgar, but now I think it is, like, right, Newman's presenting herself to be just as scummy as everyone. I mean, hell, she's got no loyalty. She turned on her dad in the diamond hat, but in her mind, it's like, well, my dad was going to turn on me, so, plus it was Homelander that kind of came to me, so even she's not 100% sure if she could kill him. That's why she's trying to get back up, because she wanted to turn the ties publicly against um, Homelander, because even saying, like, Annie, he made the mistake of making you America's sweetheart, and that comes back around later on. Um, some other stuff to get to. Kimiko's texting, um, Frenchie, I love that, like, emoji. She's like, oh, yeah, sorry for the, and uses a kiss emoji, and then she's like, no, 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 not that. It's like, oh, let's watch, uh, Singing in the Rain next or something, and then Nina's people grab her, and then when we cut back to it, she's all cut up. I was like, oh, dude. And it's Cherie there, too. I was like, oh, God, it's going to be Sophie's choice. No. I was like, oh, God, Frenchie's going to, like, hurt. Because I figured, if anything, uh, Frenchie's going to be super upset, if anything. Because I'm like, dude, he's going to be, he's going to have no choice. Because you know he's going to pick Kimiko over Cherie. Like, he just, he wouldn't want to because he cares about them both. I mean, once again, him and Cherie, Golden Girls with Jay. And it's like, but Kimiko's the woman he loves. It's like, dude. And Nina, and uh, dude, Nina's showing off all his scars. It's like, oh, like three bullets. Yeah, even that couldn't stop my um, Frenchie. And talking a little bit more about the abusiveness of his dad. It's like, oh, and this one in particular? When, well, when... Uh, when he was 14, his dad made him kneel in a glass that he broke. And uh, Frenchie didn't move an inch. Even to the point, even when his dad went off, got drunk, came back and passed out. No, no, passed out in a whorehouse. And it's like, she's getting such delight over telling all that. And it's like, now you have a choice. What are you going to do? And I'm like, Kimiko, Kimiko, Kimiko. I'm like, no, because Kimiko doesn't have her powers right now. She can't heal. And I guess Nina knows that now. But she gets her cuffs released. Slits the dude's door. I was like, yes, because she might not have her powers anymore, but uh, she's she's a trained soldier. So Kimiko knows how to fight. That's what I was about to. That's what I thought earlier on too. I was like, yeah, she still has her fighting skills, even if she doesn't have the super strength to back it up. Dude, that was bloody and that was nasty. Luckily, Cherie broke free, uh, stopped little Nina from popping Kimiko. But still, yo, home dude was laying into Kimiko. He was like punching her wound and you're just like, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. And then um, then Kimiko went apeshit on, stabbed him in the leg and they kept stabbing him in the chest over and over and over. Sadly, little Nina got away, but that's going to be an issue that's uh, going to have to watch their backs. So luckily, I was like, oh, my God, because I was I was so certain Cherie was going to be the one to catch the bullet because there's no way it was going to be Kimiko. No, just because Frenchie was going to choose Kimiko over Cherie. Like, if that's just how it was going to be. But, you know, later on, um, while he's treating her wounds, Kimiko's like. I mean, because I even love Cherie even apologized. She was like, I'm sorry, because she's the one that kind of set this all in motion by stealing from little Nina. But then later on, Kimiko, she, and, and it's that conversation, they even played at the beginning, uh, what uh, Butcher said about the V just bringing out who you really were. Um, and, and now Kimiko's like, right, 
I'm a monster. She's like, I don't even, I wanted to, I blamed the V for so long and look what I was. Even without the V, I became that. Like I did that. You know, it just, I'm a monster. To be fair, your circumstances, like you're not going to grow up a normal human being consider your circumstances. But I think Frenchie feels that way too with all that he's done in his past, especially the shit he's done for Nina. He feels like a monster too. So I think that's what brings those two together where she was like, what you did, uh, what Nina said isn't true. And he's like, yeah. And she and uh, Frenchie say, no matter how fast we are, we're not, no one's fast enough to get away from their old lives. It's like, here we are yet again, you know? And but at, at the very least, I think it is a beautiful thing that they do have each other. But you know what happens from here going forward is going to be an interesting thing. Once again, loneliness is still out there. So there's all of that. Then there's the soldier boy stuff, which um, once again showing him to be the man stuck in time like he is. Uh, as I all right, well, uh, as I all right. You help me kill all the people on my list. I'll help you kill uh, this homeland. Or what did he do? It's like, all right, so I'm not the only one who wants to pay back. Okay. Breaking up peel, sniffing it. And then later on, he's like, what is up with these dads? Like, oh, is that what dads are these days? He's like, no. Bill Cosby's the f America's dad. You're like, oh. Which I was almost like, oh, I guess you're not the biggest racist piece of shit. You're kind of like, you're going to be a bigoted piece of shit. But I mean, at least you could be, well... I mean, it's not its not something that should be taken as a compliment, but it's like him being like, no, the cause would never be caught with some pussy gear like that. You're like, it's like, oh, there's a lot to unpack there. He's like, oh, man, the cause. He made some, holy shit, he made some strong drinks. And Huey's like, holy shit. Oh, God. It's, oh, wow. Because at first I was like, wait, you're older than, I was like, no, I forgot. You disappeared. And it, it was like 89 when you got taken by the Russians. I was like, fuck, dude. And Huey did ask him about um, what happened before what, at Midtown. He was like, D nothing. D I don't want to talk about it. He's like, okay, I blacked out. And Huey's like, it, it won't happen again, right? He's like, as long as no one gets in my way. And I was like, mm-hmm. Huey's trying to justify it. being like, well, we can skate around. As long as he kills Homelander and maybe Newman. They haven't added her to the list yet. But you have to be worried about the head popper. What would head popping do to him, considering it seems like at least his inside seem to be, he'll feel pain, but he's invulnerable. At least his body, who knows what the hell that means for his brain. I mean, you enlarged a Hulk's um, heart in What If, and that ended up killing him. Spoilers, sorry, if you haven't watched What If. Um, so I wonder would the same thing apply? I don't, you'd assume Termite would be able to kill him. To be fair, he, if he's indestructible on the inside, would it rebound and basically kill kill termite in the process if that happens so big questions like that but yeah soldier boy kind of and i love that line of i'm not the bad guy here because he talked about like oh yeah i wanted a family of my own he wanted it to be with uh crimson countess but he's like yeah fuck that you know take some kids grow up to be real men so you're like okay you are a bit you are a bit not a bit you are bigoted you are like misogynistic so kind of checking all the boxes boxes like i said you seem like you're not as racist because you're like, hey, Cosby's the America's, once again, not the greatest thing to be like, hey, you don't hate black people. It's like, man, let's not use Cosby as an example of why you like, because it's like, yeah, because um, that could always be the thing of, yeah, he's he's the one good one. It could always end up being that conversation. And obviously we know he's not the one good one. He's a massive piece of shit. So it's like, God, uh, uh. either way, I'm, I'm moving past all that. Um, then we find out what hero gasm is. Apparently, this is the 70th anniversary of just like C list superheroes getting together and having a massive orgy. I didn't even talk about it. I love the opening where it's like, all right, this is something that shouldn't be viewed by some, most like, no, more, um, likely more, most, no, everyone. But let's basically, uh, this was all consensual. There are no fam there are no animals, people, blah, 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 blah. I mean, to be fair, they're like, it's pretty much a lot, ridiculous amount of money spent on visual effects for this. I love that opening title see, uh, title card for it. I'm like, that's so good. It's like, yeah, it's like, yeah, it's mainly just like a whole bunch of CGI and stuff. So, I love it. But uh, yeah, MM and Annie made their way there, which I should note they had a very good conversation because we finally find out why. Even more so, we knew why this was personal to MM, but we get into the nitty gritty of it, even where his OCD comes from. When he was a little kid and some some people were trying to steal a car or whatever, 
a soldier boy through the car. M.M. had told his grandfather, hey, who, who was asleep, Grandpa, look, it's Soldier Boy, Soldier Boy. And the moment the car flew in, it killed his grandfather. It missed him by inches, six inches specifically. And because of that, he's like, and because of that, I've had to, I check the burner every night, three times every night, just because I'm scared that Soldier Boy is going to come back and kill my family. Ever since that incident, it created the OCD in him because in his mind, it's like, this is the only way. And it, it's been there. He's like, I... He's like, now I still wake up in the middle of the night checking the burner. You're like, fuck, dude. Because M.M. blames himself. He's like, if I never woke my grandfather up, he wouldn't have been in that exact spot to die. So it's not just Soldier Boy he has issues with. I think the OCD is a manifestation of his own guilt and hatred for himself. That's like, I put my... I put my uh, grandfather in that. And also, we know what that did to his family. His father ignoring him and his uh, his brother. The fact is his dad dying, lunched over, you know, being so focused on a dead man. It's like, he blames himself not only for his grandfather, probably his father, his family playing out the way it did. So that was interesting. But, um... I love that Love Sausage is here. Because I saw his name in IMDb. I was like, oh, it's Love Sausage. He didn't get the name until uh, M.M. Rent, uh, told him, like, oh, get that love sausage away from him. He's like, love sausage, that's a really good name. I even love it. It's like, no, this guy, uh, his, and he'd be like, yeah, this guy's tongue is like, oh, like uh, the way he jumps on, uh, well, he, uh, the way he eats out of vagina or whatever. It's like, uh, um, nom, 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 nom. I'm like, oh, my God. I, I wish I could see the behind the scenes of, like, there's no way you could say that line, those lines with a straight face. I'm just, you know someone had a break. I'd love the behind the scenes uh, gag. Well, they'll probably release a gag reel at the end of this season, because I think there's one out for season one and two. But, oh, my God, that's so good. That that line, just like, oh, no, 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 no. That was so good. Um, but, yeah, uh, that's also interesting to know that Love Sausage, because the last time we saw Love Sausage, she was in that facility. So did that facility get shut down after Stormfront? Like, after everything went out with Stormfront? Because, like, for him to be there, I guess, like, now that those people have control over their powers, they eventually got released. Once again, the other head popper, once again, I can't remember her name, she's still out and about. But if they're here, but to be fair, she went off on her own, so we don't know how that's going to play out, whether that's going to be story relevant this season or not. Uh, but full blown orgy. We see termites there. It's like, man, have you not learned your lesson? You literally just murdered your boyfriend early at the beginning. Not even just like early in the season. The oh, before we got the title card to this season, the boys in the first episode, even before we got the title card, you murdered your boyfriend because you sneezed inside of him. Like, and you're still doing it because I love MM's like, ew, what is this on me? Then he goes in and he opens the door. And gets covered in the largest load of cum ever. I mean, that's a bukkake level amount of cum. Never mind, that put a bukkake to shame. We can all be frank here. That's an, a disgusting amount of cum. Like, I kind of felt sick to my stomach. He was covered in that much cum. It's like, oh. He's like, get me to a bathroom. Get me to a bathroom right now. And in your favorite jacket, too. Ah, uh, very scary movie-esque of just how big that was. It's like, oh, uh, oh, you're going to eat that up, aren't you, you not, you yummy, naughty uh, brown bear or something like that. It's like, oh, God. Oh, God. Uh, that party was why I even love later on when Huey's there, that guy, like, touches Huey. I guess, like, he uh, psychically says something to Huey, and Huey's like, oh, no, like, I'm, I'm sorry, but, I, you know, I'm giving my asshole a break or something like that. And the guy's like, okay. I'm like, oh, dude. Because uh, when they do show up with um, Soldier Boy, it's like, apparently Soldier Boy founded this back in 52. He's like, yeah, with Liberty, she was quite the firecracker. I was like, bro, so you kick it with Nazis. Interesting, 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 interesting. And did you just see Huey and uh, Butcher look at each other when he references her. It's like, probably shouldn't tell you what happened to her, should we? It's like, how would he feel about knowing she was a Nazi? Especially because you were a, a war hero, you fought in World War II, you fought against the Nazis. How would you feel knowing that you were side by side? You started this whole thing with a Nazi. And I love that both M.M. and uh, Butcher both said, God, Frenchie's going to hate himself for missing out on this. To be fair, once again, we, as, we, as we discussed earlier, Frenchie kind of was going through some shit on his own. So, yeah, I'm sure he would be happy to be switched places with them. Um, either way, I love that Starlight ran into the Deep, 
who was getting sucked off by an octopus. He's like, no, this isn't one of the... She's like, I can't wait to show this to Homelander. Then you had Huey being there, him running in the A train, and he's just like, yo, no, and she, cause Huey's feeling himself. It's like, you know what? No, fuck that. You owe me, you never said sorry. He's like, excuse me? You never said sorry for Robin. You ran into her, and he's like, I'm sorry, okay? Is that what you, hurting, like, someone, seeing someone you care about get hurt? For the first time ever, A train was so damn sincere, and Huey didn't care. Because for Huey, it's like, it's too little too late. He's been sitting on his powder keg for so long. You were the antithesis for everything that Huey's going through. Everything, getting to where he was at the beginning of this series to where he is now. It's all because of A-Train. And in that moment, he punches A-Train because he could never do anything to A-Train before. You know? Which is ironic, considering, like, he's the one that helped save A-Train at the end of season one. And sadly, like, Huey's giving it, you know, the V is bringing out the worst in him. Or in, in any, how any would kind of put it bringing out who you've always been to some extent. So, A-Train kind of gets punched in the face, and it's like, how did you do that? And he's trying to get, um, it's like, come on, with me, work with me, Huey, let's get everyone out of here. I was almost hoping Huey would do it, but what did Huey do? He got him and Annie out of there, and he's like, wait, those people, it's like, but he tried to be like, no, uh, Soldier Boy promised not to do anything. It's like, yeah, but when Homelander gets here, so in his mind, it's like, well, if Homelander's going to come here, I'm get, definitely getting you out of here because I don't want you to get in trouble. But the moment he did that, like, she's, you know, for him, it's like, I want to save you. She's like, I don't, you don't have to save me. And he's like, I do because I'm tired of always being saved by you, you being the strong one all the time. She's like, in our first date, you said it didn't bother you. And he's like, it does. Well, I'm sorry, but it does. A little, sometimes a little bit. It's a, all of this is birthed because of Huey's insecurities, and even then, like Starlight blasts him out of the way. Uh, I thought that was gonna. I was like, are they actually gonna fight it out? Luckily, it didn't turn to that. But Soldier Boy stepped into the the um, house, about to do his thing, run into the TNT twins. Um, well, Eminem ran into him first and tried to knock him out with the stuff that the Russians knocked him out with. Didn't work. He just inhaled it like it was nothing. M.M. was ready to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, but Butcher stopped him. Sent him on his way to the twins. The twins end up admitting Noir is the one that... Like, they were following Noir. He's the one that... Which is interesting. Well, I guess that decision was made long before that. Because I was about to say, considering Noir's situation. Now you know why Noir ran. Because it's like, right, it was up to him. But I'm sure Edgar's the one that kind of gave the say-so. So I'm curious about that confrontation when Soldier Boy eventually gets up to... Finds Noir, most likely kills him, and then it's the whole him and Edgar thing. Once again, we'll by then when we find out that Edgar does he actually have any power? Does he not? We'll have to see. Because even Soldier Boy's like Noir wouldn't do anything without Vault say so. So now he knows Vault's the one that set me up with the Russians. N Noir went along with it, but. You know, so like, oh, I'm definitely going to kill him, but I'm probably going to burn that building to the ground, in particular Edgar. So that's going to be interesting. And so with all of that, uh, he accidentally, he hears some music nearby and he explodes. The TNT, and tw TNT twins tried to do their thing, but I guess it'd been so long that their powers didn't work. And they all, that entire room gets, entire house gets obliterated. People are burned to a crisp, incinerated. The house is destroyed. So many people dead and wounded. It's like, God. They said at least 12 people died. I'm surprised just that few people died, considering how many people were in that house. Um, shit hit the fan hard. Blue Hulk got out of there, and A-Train wants justice. What did he do? Knocked him on the ground dragged his ass across the damn road. I was like, yo! Which there's a layer of... I'm not poetic. I guess poetic might be the right way. Uh, because being dragged like that, it, it's happened to a lot of black people. So it's almost like, right, doing what you've done to a black community and a black superhero kind of doing that to you. There is a fucked up poetic justice to it, which isn't doesn't make it right. But yo... He would like, and they showed you him skidding across the ground. Not like his skin is peeled away, fucking his rib cage is exposed, and in that moment, A Train passes out and potentially dies. No Annie or Huey there to save you this time. So whether someone finds him in time or whether he resuscitates, 
who knows? I don't know if this is the end for A Train or not. Uh, when that's all said and done, you had uh, Soldier Boy being like, "Huh? Who did all this?" It's like, "Okay, yeah, you, this is a this is a goddamn issue. If he keeps blacking out like this, people are going to die. Bodies are going to be dropping left and right, like they haven't already." Motherfucker hasn't been awake that long, and he's already dropped thirty plus bodies. Then, lo and behold, Homelander gets there. I'm like, "Yo." I was like, and him and Soldier Boy away from, or across from each other. I even love him being like, wow, Butcher, William, of course it's you. He's like, yeah, it really is all about me. It's like, I love it. It's like, technically it is, but you narcissistic fuck. But then it's like, all right, you know, him and, because he's like, oh, you and I made a pact that would be a battle to the death. You cheated. And he heat visions uh, Butcher not knowing, but uh, Soldier Boy is like, oh. And I love Homelander being like, I looked up to you. You were my hero. I watched all your movies all the time. I, you know, find, I thought you were as strong as me. He's like, really, kid? You're wearing a cape. You can't be that tough. And they duke it. I was like, are we about to do this? Are we about to do this? And they duke it up. I'm like, fuck, yes. They're duking it out. I'm like, oh, shit. This is like fairly even. I am curious, would Soldier Boy stand a better chance if he hadn't already blown his load back there, like blasting or is it just, well, because to be fair, he's super strong and he has that power, but Homelander has, like, everything else. He has superhuman strength, super speed, he can fly, he has heat vision, so it kind of turns the table a little bit. Um, but the fact is, your boy, uh, your boy was, like, Homelander was kind of getting the upper edge, but then... Uh, Butcher stood up, heat vision to me, and even he was like, what the, f what the fuck? And then I'm like, yo, are we about to? And they double team his ass. I'm like, yo, Captain America at, uh, uh, God, uh, Steve and Bucky versus Tony from, uh, Captain America Civil War. It's like, yo, them double teaming him like that. Then your boy Huey drops it, jumps in to kind of even the plane. But I'm like, yo, it kind of a little inverse. It's like, right, Kimiko, Maeve, and Annie stomping Stormlander, um, Stormlander, Stormfront's ass last season. Now you got Huey, Butcher, and Soldier Boy doing their thing. It's like, go ahead and light them up. And like, Soldier Boy's doing his thing. And then like, oh, because like, um, Butcher's like, Huey, get out of here. He's like, no way. Because I was scared this would have been a Thanos thing of like, yeah, you fucked this up. And it's like, oh, we almost got the glove off. We almost got the glove off. Don't fuck this up, uh, Star-Lord. And he fucks it up. Huey Bailing probably would have done that. Would have given uh, Homelander the opportunity to get away. Still got away either way. Motherfucker ran. He's never run from a fight before. I mean, he's kind of forced to at the end of season two because he didn't want peep the, the video to leak about him. But he, the fucker ran. And at the end, you know, because Andy had pulled M.M. away. It's like, right, he has no hold over you. And I think maybe for the first time, M.M. will be okay. M.M. won't be so driven by vengeance. We'll see whether that OCD of his is going away or not. Because if it has, this is going to mean a lot. That Andy got him to finally kind of let go of his anger and his revenge. Because Huey kind of let that go because he didn't hold as much of a grudge against a train. I mean, it still was awkward and weird and fucked up, but he didn't, it wasn't the vendetta he had. He kind of let that go to some extent. But once again, now he's so much like Butcher. So M.M. wants nothing to do with Butcher. Um, sadly, Starlight's done with um, Huey. So they're all, they all end up leaving. And with all that death and destruction, um... I don't know if this is it. I don't think this is her working with Victoria. I think she's taking the idea Victoria had and taking advantage of it. Doesn't mean that Victoria might jump on this bandwagon, but well, I don't know because like Annie called everyone out. She was like, "Bot sucks, Homelander sucks, all soups pretty much suck." I should have stood up uh, before now and told you the truth, but I'm doing it now. Uh, this was Soldier Boy, and to her following, being like, because even someone you can see in the chat is like, oh, what they did to Maeve is like, is Maeve dead? Because even she doesn't know. Um, and so everything's come crumbling down because Starlight's already been in this position with like the deep in season one, speaking her truth, speaking her truth again, and everything's going to come crumbling down. And it's like, because even Homelander knows how close he was to losing that fight, especially if Soldier Boy would have been able to get that beam off, he would have lost his powers. And you're like, oh my God. And just Starlight's like, I'm not Starlight anymore. I'm any January and I fucking quit. And you're like, oh my God. 
like I said, there was just so much shit in this episode, and it was so fucking good. Where this all takes us going forward into the next episode, I cannot wait. Because there's only two episodes left in this season. It feels so wild to think the season's already done, or almost done already. To be fair, we got three episodes dropped at once, but still, it just feels like the season's going by so fast. But I cannot wait to see how this plays out. I'm curious where things are going to stand on the Homelander front because I do know, I don't know the details, but I have been, I've heard from someone being like, how the Homelander situation plays out in the comics. Not details, just like, right. There is a dealing with that. So I don't, I'm curious, like, if that is where this season ends, potentially, with Homelander potentially being dealt with. Is Soldier Boy going to be the next issue or there's going to be something else in the way? I don't know. Because the boys, once again, the boys have been divided before, but this is like they're really at odds with each other. MM's not going to have anything to do with Butcher or uh, or Huey. He's got Annie by his side. It's like, right, we're going to do things the right way. What's Frenchie and Kimiko going to do in this fight? Like, they're still going to get dragged back into this, you know. It's going to be interesting to see what choices they make. Uh, I cannot wait to see where their next episode takes us. Uh, but really, that's all I want to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.